Okay, let's have this clinical example where a 70 year old lady um, with a history of chronic systolic heart failure with ejection fraction 25% and present to the ED with a respiratory distress for which she was placed on mechanical ventilation. Chest, chest X-ray was consistent with pulmonary edema, was placed on this mode volume control, tidal volume for 80 mil, 100% FiO2, plus 5 P, respiratory of 12, and ABG showed the PO2 was 65, PCO2 70, bicarb 23, and pH 7.1. Again, these kind of arbitrary numbers here. So first of all, this lady has pulmonary edema. And in heart failure in general, there is volume overload, which means there is high preload so that's the main the first issue there is high preload and if you remember the frank starling curve with high preload this usually that means we are in the insensitive area because the preload is high that means any change of preload has minimal effect or small effect on the stroke volume so the first goal here in treatment of heart failure is try to decrease the preload to shift the care to the left side. So this is um, a major issue in heart failure. Another issue in pulmonary edema. In pulmonary edema, we have the, the capillary. Because of the increase in the left ventricle filling pressure, there will be a backup pressure, if I can say the capillary pressure will increase and the fluid will transudate into, if this is the alveoli, into the interstitium and inside the alveoli. So there will be a pressure because the increase in the pressure of the capillary, this will increase the gradient of the pressure between the capillary and alveoli. So another way to help with pulmonary edema is to reverse this pressure gradient by increasing alveolar pressure. So that's a second goal in pulmonary edema. So based on this, we need to do two things. We need to first decrease preload and second, increase alveolar pressure. And third, we need to decrease LV after load because we need to increase cardiac output. Because heart failure patients are very sensitive to after load, um, and any change in the afterload can have significant impact on the stroke volume. And remember, higher afterload will shift the curve here, and lower afterload shift the curve here. So we need these three goals, decrease preload, increase alveolar pressure, and decrease left ventricle afterload. So we'll apply all of these in our example, but we'll do it next video.